George the Turtle loved being a postman, and he took pride in making sure all his friends got their posts safely. In fact, he never once failed to deliver a letter. George had to take a little break every now and then. Delivering post was thirsty work in the hot outback sun. Oh, just what I needed. Hi, George. Lovely morning. More than Alice. It's gonna be a scorcher. Have you got any mail for me? Well, uh, I normally, uh, you know, like to deliver the mail, well, get properly to your house. Uh, I like to make sure it arrives safely. Oh. OK, George. But I suppose just this once we could have a little look-see. Oh, if you're sure. Now then, uh... Ah. Here you go, Alice. One letter delivered by hand. Oh, thanks, George. I don't know what we'd do without you. <laughs> All part of the service, Alice. Bye. Bye, Alice. Another satisfied customer. Right then, back to work. In all the excitement, poor George had forgotten to tighten the lid on his flask of tea. His post was getting all wet. Meanwhile, at the Koala Brothers' homestead, it was wash day. OK, Ned. After three. Three! three. Uh, uh, Buster, where are you? I'm over here. I'm... <laughs> <sighs> all over it. You're supposed to wash it before you hang it up. I think we better wash it again, Ned. I think you're right, Buster. <sighs> oh, dear. Morning, George. Morning, everyone. Hi, George. Right. Uh, let's have a little look-see. Uh, now... Oh. Oh. All of George's mail was dripping wet. Oh, dear. Any mail, George? Well, um, no. Uh, w well, yes. Um, well, sort of. Uh, everything all right, George? Oh. It's a bit soggy. Oh, it's all my fault. Halt. Me flask of tea must have leaked in my satchel. Everyone's post is ruined. Don't worry, George. Th there must be something we can do. Hey, eh, Frank? Well, as we've got to wash the sheet all over again, we can peg George's post out to dry on the washing line. Do you think so? Frank's right. They'll be dry in no time in the hot sun. Oh, thanks, fellas. We're here to help. Ned, can you help me hang this lot up? You can count on me, Frank. And we'll have a nice cup of tea while we wait for the post to dry. I don't really feel like tea, Buster. I know, George. It'll be all right. <gasps> so with Ned's help, Frank hung George's mail out to dry. Hmm. That's the last one, Frank. Thanks, Ned. Now, all we have to do is wait. George was feeling bad about soaking the mail. He felt like he'd let everyone down. Don't worry, George. Everyone makes mistakes. But I'm not supposed to make mistakes. I'm supposed to deliver the post. Are these dry yet? Frank and Buster were right. The mail was dry in no time. Ah, here you go, George. Dry as an old stick. Oh, thanks, Frank. Oh. Something wrong, George? Well, it's really dry, but uh, I can't read the address. He's right, Frank. The ink must have run when it got wet. Ah. Uh, oh. I can't read any of them. Oh, dear. How can I deliver the post when I don't know where it's supposed to go? Well, this one's from Penny the Duck. Ah, uh, Penny's a penguin, Mitzi. How do you know it's from her anyway, Mitzi? Who else do you know that comes from the South Pole? Of course. Penny sends us a card every week. Well done, Mitzi. I wonder if there are any clues on the others. Ah! Oops! Ooh, that's a bouncy one. 
Hmm. It's squashy too. I think I know who that one's for. You do? Can I hang my washing up now? Mitzi. <laughs> At the waterhole, Archie and Josie had arranged to play tennis. But there was something missing. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, where's George? We can't play without him. Maybe I should come back later, Archie. Hi, Archie. Hi, Archie. Hello, Josie. Hi, Josie. Hello, all. George! Oh! Oh! Uh, don't suppose you have a little something for me, George? How about this? Aha! Thanks, George. Archie! What would we do without you? It's a tennis ball. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, Josie! Game on! <laughs> With just the letter and the little parcel left to deliver, George was feeling a lot better. So, uh, who do you think it belongs to, Frank? Hmm. Mm. This one's tricky. Did you hear that, Frank? It sounds like a bell. But who needs a bell? Good day, all. Maybe we should ask Sammy. Good idea, Frank. Hi, Sammy. Whoa! Sorry, Sammy. We didn't mean to make you jump. Oh, <laughs> good day, all. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. You see, the bell's broken on my door. I'm waiting for a new one. Well, Sammy, your wait is over. Here. Huh? Oh, thanks, George. You're a marvel. <laughs> Just doing my job. <laughs> They looked all over the last letter, but couldn't find any clues. Who was the letter for? We could always open it. Oh, no. No, we couldn't do that. People's letters are private. For the first time ever, it looked like George wasn't going to deliver a letter. There's only one thing to do. George will have to open the letter in front of everybody. Oh, well, I don't know. Great idea, Frank. Everyone gathered in the town to see if they owned the last letter. They were all very excited. OK, everyone. George is now going to open the letter. Well, I'm not sure I'd really... Open the letter, George! OK. Here goes. Come on, George. Who's it for? Uh, uh, it, it's for me. Oh. Will you look at that? It's a certificate from the post office for the best postman in the outback. Oh, well, I'll be. Congratulations, George. Oh, easy, Master. Yay! I'd, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank Frank and Buster for all their help. And uh, from now on, I'll always make sure everyone's letters arrive safe and dry. Hooray! So George realised that everyone, including the best postman in the outback, sometimes made mistakes. And from then on, he always checked his flask to make sure that no one ever got a wet letter again. One day, Sammy the shopkeeper was collecting honey from his beehive. Sammy loved his bees. Every morning he'd check to see that they'd all arrived home safely. Good day, Dolly. And you, Sally. Mandy. <laughs> Good day, Trixie. Bessie? Oh, uh, Bessie, well, where are you? On this particular day, Sammy discovered one of his bees hadn't returned home. Bessie was missing. Oh, don't worry, everyone. I'll find Bessie. Meanwhile, at the homestead, something else was missing. Have you been at the honey again, Buster? Ah, oh, sorry, Frank. Sammy's honey is so nice, I can't resist it. 
Good thing we keep a spare jar in the cupboard. Uh, uh, oh. Cooey! Morning. Hi, Mitzi. Thanks for the honey, Buster. Mmm, it was delicious. <sighs> Buster. Oh, well, we're here to help. Huh? Oh, it's Sammy. <laughs> he's, he's wearing something really funny. Oh, Bessie, where are you? You're not here. Oh, oh, oh. I like your hat. Oh, good day, Ned. Uh, thanks. Morning, Sammy. What can we do for you? Good day, all. Uh, uh, have you seen Bessie? Who's Bessie? Uh, she's one of my bees. She hasn't returned to the hive. We haven't seen her, have we, Buster? No. Sorry, Sammy. It's only one little bee. You must have loads more, Sammy. Oh, every bee is different. They're all important. Oh. Maybe she's in town. I've searched everywhere for her. She must be lost. She could be anywhere. Ooh. What's up with him? Ned's scared of bees. Don't worry, Sammy. We'll help you find Bessie, won't we, Buster? Sure. We're, We're here, here to help. help. Later that morning, George the postman was just finishing his tea break. Well, just what I needed. A nice cup of tea. Ah, morning, Buster. What you doing? Hi, George. Sammy's lost one of his bees. You haven't seen it, have you? Sorry, Buster. Haven't seen a soul until you came along. Poor little thing. I'll keep my eyes open for it. Thanks, George. Got a dash. Bye. Um. Mm. Meanwhile, at the homestead, Frank was getting everyone ready to search for Bessie. What do you want me to do with this, Frank? It's for catching bees with. Oh! The post is in position, Frank. Good work, Buster. Ned had been getting ready too. He'd made a hat to keep the bees away. Right. The first thing we need to know, Sammy, is how we'll be able to recognise Bessie. Huh? Hello, everyone. Ask Ned about the box. Why the box, Ned? Don't like bees. Ahem. So, how will we know it's Bessie then? Yeah, all bees look the same. But they don't all sound the same. Bessie sounds like this. Oh, that's great. But that's not right, Mitzi. Sammy's doing this. <sighs> well, that's great. Now I think Buster and I should search the outback in the plane. Oh, good idea, Frank. The rest of us can search the homestead. Ah, 19. Ah, 20. Oh, George! <laughs> Caught me doing my exercises. <laughs> Any post? Hi, Archie. Uh, let's have a little look-see at that. Aha! Ah! <laughs> Shh! Listen. What are we listening to, George? Oh, it's gone. I thought I could hear Sammy's missing bee. Missing? Yeah, poor little Bessie. Somewhere out there, all alone. Oh, dear. Are you sure we'll see anything from up here, Frank? Try your telescope, Buster. There! Down there! I saw something, Frank. I really did. There! There it is again. It must be Bessie. Where? Let me have a look. Can you see her, Frank? Can you see Bessie? Uh, when was the last time you cleaned your telescope, Buster? <laughs> Sorry, Frank. Uh, well, let's go back and see how the others are getting on. 
The others had been searching all over the homestead. There was still no sign of Bessie. Oh, where are you, little Bessie? Ugh. Sammy wants you home now. You must really like Bessie, Sammy. I love all my bees. Ned? Yes? Why don't you like bees? Um, um, bees sting you. They do if you upset them, Ned. You know, it's best never to touch bees or go anywhere near them unless you're a beekeeper like me. Then you'll be safe. OK. Any luck? No. It's no good. I don't think we're ever going to find B -B -B Bessie. We've just got to keep looking, Sammy. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. George, are you all right? Yeah, I've just finished my rounds and I'm, I'm here to lend a hand. Any news? Mm -mm -mm. She could be anywhere. Mitz is right. If there's one thing I know, Sammy, the outback is full of surprises. You should never give up. Thanks, George. Uh, what's up, Ned? Sorry, Ned. No post for you in there. I can hear something. It's buzzing. <gasps> hey, I can hear it too. Oh. Bessie, it's you. Oh, don't go away. Bessie. Come here, uh, Bessie. Uh, over here. Quickly. Huh? Oh, no. We've lost her. She's gone again. She can't be far. It's all right. Look. Ah. Oh, she's really beautiful. I think she likes you, Ned. Well, well done, done, Ned. Come on, little Bessie. Let's get you home. There you go, Bessie. Home sweet home. Later that day, Sammy decided that everyone who'd helped find Bessie deserved a reward. A jar of his special honey. Mm. Mm. Delicious! Oh, tea break tomorrow. Thanks, Sammy. So everything turned out well in the end. Ned wasn't frightened of bees anymore, and Sammy was happy that Bessie was safe, because all life is special, no matter how small. Josie, the little kangaroo, loved helping Sammy in his store. Peppers, milk. Biscuits, bananas. She especially liked getting the orders ready for delivery and always took special care to make sure everything was perfect. And last of all, a pineapple. All done. That's it, Josie. Only room in the trunk for one more box. I'll do this round and come back for the rest later. <sighs> And for another lovely cup of tea in my favourite mug. I have the kettle on, Sammy. Ah, uh, what would I do without you, Josie? You do a terrific job. Oh, thanks, Sammy. So as Sammy set off to deliver groceries across the outback, he left Josie to get on with filling the rest of the boxes. It was then that it happened. Oh, no! Sammy's favourite mug! What am I going to do? Maybe, maybe I should hide the pieces. Good day there, Josie. Just the one for you today. Everything all right? Oh, yes, George. Oh, good -o. I'll be off then. Bye. Oh. I, I wonder if I could glue it back together. Cooey! Oh, no. I mustn't let Mitzi see what I've done. Phew! It's a hot one today. Can I have some Billy Beans, please, Josie? There you are, Mitzi. Thanks, Josie. Sammy's really lucky to have a good helper like you. Uh, thanks. See you later. Oh, this is wrong. 
I can't hide them anymore. I'll have to tell Sammy what I do. Hi, Josie. Hi, Josie. We're here to see Sammy. <gasps> hey, what happened? I've broken Sammy's favourite mug. I tried to hide it, but I felt bad. Josie, it's always better to tell the truth. And anyway, it was an accident. Accidents happen. Sammy will understand. Do you think so? I just wish there was something I could do to make it up to him. How about giving Sammy a new mug? But where would I get one? This is the only store in town. Frank could make you one. Me? Uh, well, I... Uh, uh... Thanks, Buster. But I think I should make Sammy a new mug. I'm the one who broke it. Ooh, OK, Josie. But if you need a hand, you know where to find us. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Buster. It was only after Frank and Buster had gone that Josie realised she'd forgotten to ask them something very important. <laughs> Frank! Buster! How do I make a... mug? I don't know. But it was too late. Oh. George knows a lot of things. George, I was wondering if you knew how to make a mug. I want to make one for Sammy. A mug, hey? Well, all I can tell you is they're made of, uh, clay. Yes, that's it, clay. And I happen to know that clay is found in wet areas. Archie lives near the water hole. That's wet. He might know. I'll ask Archie. Thanks, George. No problem, Josie. Are you sure I can't give you a nice cup of tea, Sammy? Oh, thanks, Archie, but I've still got all my deliveries to do. I'll get one back at the store. Ah, right you are, then. Hello there, Josie. You're just in time for a cup of tea. Thanks, Archie, but not right now. George said you might be able to help me. Oh? Living by the waterhole, Archie knew where the very best clay was to be found. There you are, Josie. Ha! Ah, ha! A nice big hunk of clay. Oh, thanks, Archie. Now I've just got to make it into a mug for Sammy. But how do I do that? Uh, hmm. Do you know something, Josie? Clay looks a bit like pastry, doesn't it? Like something you cook with. That's an idea. It is? Yes. Alice is a good cook. She might know. I'll ask Alice. Thanks, Archie. Oh, well, yeah. So Josie asked Alice if she could help her make a mug for Sammy. And now, roll it flat. Yes, that's it, Josie. Then bend it into a mug shape. But Alice wasn't able to help Josie make a mug either. <sighs> what a shame we're not making pancakes. There must be somebody who knows how to make a mug, Josie. Buster said Frank could make a mug for me. Maybe I'll ask them. So Josie headed out to the homestead to see if Frank and Buster could help her. There you go. One potter's wheel. Wow! Frank had a go at pottery making a while ago. He's got all the kit under the house. Pottery oven, paints, everything. Mm, but I wasn't very good at it. That's why it's under the house. I reckon you should have another go, Frank, and help Josie make a mug for Sammy. Oh, please, Frank. Mm. OK, then. Oh, Frank's not having another go, is he? First, you take the clay, Josie, and throw it onto the wheel. Oh! I'm standing over here where it's safe. I heard yelling. What's up? Frank's teaching Josie how to make a mug. Frank is? <laughs> oh, no, I remember what happened last time. <laughs> right, Josie, now you work it up and down to shape it. Like... Oh. 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 Meanwhile, out on the road, Sammy had stopped to clean his windscreen. G'day there, Sammy. How about an ice cream? My special for today is triple chocolate choc chip with double chocolate sprinkles. Oh, no thanks, Lolly. I've just about finished my rounds and Josie's going to have a nice cup of tea waiting for me when I get back to the store. 
Now, you work it into the shape you want. Oh, not again. Josie, I'm sorry, I... Frank, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. You do? Yes. Can I have a go? That's what you were trying to show me, isn't it, Frank? Uh, yeah. Hey, that's terrific, Josie. And then you wanted me to work it like this into a mug shape, didn't you, Frank? Yeah. And this is how you wanted me to make a handle, isn't it, Frank? Definitely. A work of art, Josie. It turned out that Josie had a real talent for pottery. But I couldn't have done it if you hadn't shown me how, Frank. Me? Really? Well, <laughs> I, I'm here to help. <laughs> All we've got to do now is to put the mug in a pottery oven, bake it hard and then decorate it. I'm going to do an extra special decoration just for Sammy. He's back! Oh, good day, everyone. Good day, Hello, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Sammy, I've got to tell you something. I, I, I broke your favourite mug. It was an accident. I'm really sorry. My favourite mug? Oh. Uh, still, it's good of you to own up and tell me, Josie. I really wanted to make it up to you, Sammy. So I made this for you. Oh, you made this? With Frank's help. Why, it, it, it's tremendous. The best mug I've ever had. It, oh, it's better than my favourite one. Maybe it's your new favourite one, Sammy. <laughs> oh, you bet it is. Oh, thanks, Josie. My new favourite mug. <laughs> so just as Frank and Buster said, accidents do happen. But as Josie discovered, it's always better to own up, as there are always friends like the Koala Brothers who can help you put things right. <laughs> Every morning, when George the Postman took his tea break, he loved to chat to a little plant that grew by the roadside. I love a good rest and a nice cup of tea. <laughs> you know, being on your feet all morning makes you really appreciate a good wiggle. Oh, <laughs> that's better. Do you like a good wiggle too? <laughs> Perhaps you wiggle your leaves. It was then that George discovered that something wasn't quite right. <gasps> oh, what's up? Aren't you feeling well? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I've got to get you some help. George really loved his little plant and he knew there was only one place to go for help. Don't move. I'll be right back. Meanwhile, at the homestead, the Koala brothers were carrying out some repairs. <laughs> Morning, George. Oh, I've come for help. It's... it's me little plant. It doesn't look very well. Sorry, George. We, um... we don't know much about plants. Oh. You could ask Mitzi. She loves plants. Good idea, Ned. Hey, Mitzi! Oh. Morning, George. Everything all right? Well, actually, no. His little plant isn't very well. We thought you could give him some advice, Mitzi. Sure. Let's have a look at it then. It's, uh, it's in the outback, near the road. Oh, it's an outback plant. Sometimes they don't last long, George. Too hot and dry out in the open. You mean it could die? Yeah. Sorry. My little plant. It's going to die. There must be something he can do, Mitzi. Well, if he can give it some shade and lots and lots of water, that might help. You think so? Here, you can borrow this. Thanks, Mitzi. Thank you, everyone. Don't worry, little plant. George is coming. Do you think we're going to get any post today? George took Mitzi's advice. He'd do anything to make sure his little plant was well again. There you go. You'll soon be right as rain. Oh, dear. Mitzi's right. The sun is too hot. I wonder... There you go. That should keep the sun out. Morning, George! Morning! 
Alice. Ah, there. As good as new. Good as new, Frank. You know, Frank, I can't stop thinking about George and his poor plan. Me too, Buster. I know. It's about time for patrol. We can go and check up on him. Good idea, Frank. Chocks away, Buster! Chocks away, Frank! Get the gate, Ned! I'm getting the gate, Frank! Buckle up, Buster! Buckle up! George is okay. It's just a little plant. But to George, that little plant was very special. How's it looking, Frank? Oh, not good. I've tried watering it and sheltering it from the sun. I just don't know what else to do. It's just too hot for the poor little fella. If only there was a cooling breeze. George, I've got an idea. Ready, Buster? Ready, Frank? It's just right! It's too light! OK! What the... Stop! 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 Frank! Oh, are you all right? Yes. Yes, you are. Phew! Bit too much breeze, I think, Frank. Uh, um, sorry, George. How's your plant? Still the same. Here, Frank. This one's for us. Oh, the post. With all this worry, I, I clean forgot to deliver it. Oh. Don't worry, George. We understand. You want to help your little plant. We can deliver your post for you if you'd like. You can? Sure. And we can look for something to keep your plant cool, too. Oh, thank you. So Frank and Buster made sure everyone got their letters. Ah, uh, let's have a little look-see. There you go. All part of the service. Oh, thanks, Buster. Uh, where's George, then? He's looking after his little plant. It's not very well. Oh, uh, anything I can do to help? This could come in handy, Sammy. Then it's yours, Frank. Ah, poor George. Aha! Has he tried watering it? He's tried everything. Ah. Oh. Have you got something that might help out, Archie? Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Why don't you come in? Have a look around. Thanks, Archie. Uh, oops. George was glad to see the koala brothers. His little plant was looking worse than ever. One breeze. These are from Archie. Oh. And this is from Josie. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Hi, Ned. Hello, George. I thought this might help. Why, thanks, Ned. Thank you, everyone. You've all been so kind. George, we're here to help. Can I stay and help? Oh, thanks, Ned. So with Ned making the cooling breeze, George nursed his little plant. But as the day grew long, Ned and George grew tired. They'd been watering and blowing and fanning all afternoon. George's little plant didn't look any better. I think you've done all you can, Ned. Why don't you go home? What about your plant? It's no good. Mitzi was right. Sometimes they just don't last long. Are you coming too? No, I'll just stay here. Keep it company. Well, bye, George. Bye, and thanks, Ned. But George can't stay out all night, Frank. He'll get cold. We've tried everything, Buster. What else can we do? George won't move from his little plant. <sighs> <sighs> Maybe you need to move the plant, then. Mitzi, you're a genius. Come on, Buster. Let's get the plane. All you had to do was ask. 
Frank will be careful, won't he, Buster? Don't worry, George. He knows what he's doing. Thanks to Mitzi, George's little plant was going to have a new home. Somewhere safe from the hot outback sun. There we go. Is it OK, Frank? Yeah, it's going to be fine, George. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> By the next morning, George was back to his cheery best. Right then, uh, let's have a little look-see. Morning, George! George. Morning, Frank. Uh, Buster. So, how's me little plant doing today? George! George! Come and have a look. You'll never guess. Come on! It's got a little flower. Me plant's got a little flower. It must be really happy in its new home, George. There you go. Oh, oh, did, did you see that? It wiggled. Oh, thank you, everyone. I don't know what we'd have done without us. Ah, oh, we are here to help, George. There you that go. day, everyone realised that even the smallest thing, like George's little plant, was important and needed to be looked after and cared for. <laughs> In the outback, there are two things you can rely on. The sun always shining and Sammy's store always being open. Sammy was the proudest shopkeeper in the outback. He always tried his hardest to give his customers exactly what they wanted. There you go, Alice. I don't know what we'd do without you, Sammy. Ah, it's nice of you to say so, Alice. If my customers are happy, then I'm happy too. Hooey! Good day, Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. What can I get you? If you want it, I've got it. Oh, great. Can I have a yo-yo? Uh, <laughs> a yo-yo. Right. Uh, don't fancy a skipping rope, I suppose. Nah, I really want a yo-yo. Uh... Well, I, 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 I don't seem to have one. <gasps> Sammy, you said you had everything. I'm sorry, Mitzi. Oh, never mind. Bye, Sammy. Bye, Mitzi. Sammy was worried. What use was a shopkeeper who couldn't give people what they wanted? Uh. Oh, Morning. Fill her up, Josie. OK. Hi, Alice. Morning, Buster. Frank, have you heard? Heard what? Mitzi asked Sammy for a yo-yo and he didn't have one. Well, I think Sammy's a bit worried. We'd better see if he's OK, Buster. Sammy was a bit worried. If he didn't have a yo-yo for Mitzi, maybe there were other things he didn't have too. Ah! Bed springs. I don't have bed springs. Or, or cookie cutters. Hi, Sammy. Frank! Buster! How are you? How are you today? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm fine. Fine. Are you sure? Alice told us about the yo-yo. She did? Oh. Can I get you something? We've bought our grocery list. Yes. 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 Oh! <laughs> I have everything on the list. Absolutely everything. Well, uh, great. Do you want me to deliver this afternoon? Thanks, Sammy. Yeah, thanks. Oh, if my customers are happy, then I'm happy too. Nuts! Oh, I haven't got nuts. Oh. Later, Sammy had to deliver Frank and Buster's groceries to the homestead. Thanks for looking after the store, Josie. No problem, Sammy. Have a nice trip. But Sammy's day was getting worse and worse. Sammy! Wait! See you later, Josie. <laughs> Good day, George. <laughs> Afternoon, Sammy. Sammy! Oh, dear. Sammy, wait! Um, oh, beans everywhere. Oh, dear. I hope Sammy comes soon. I'm starving. Don't worry, Buster. You can always rely on Sammy. He's here. Good day, all. Hi, Sammy. 
Am I glad to see you. <laughs> Afternoon, Sammy. <laughs> I think Buster's hungry. Made it just in time, then. <laughs> I'll get your groceries out the back. Ah! Where are they? Ah, they're gone. All gone. No billy beans. Here's your problem, Sammy. It must have come undone. Oh. What's up? Sammy's lost the groceries. Oh. Have you got any yo-yos yet, Sammy? Only Ned wants one, too. I'd like a green one. I'm sorry, Mitzi, but I haven't got any. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Oh, don't worry, Sammy. We'll help you find the groceries. No need, Buster. Oh, Sammy, I think these belong to you. George has beaten us to him. Thanks a bunch, George. I'm really sorry. It's OK, Sammy. And thank you, George. Oh, Sammy really is having a bad day. Yeah. Back at the shop, Sammy made a list of all the things he didn't have. Uh, hairbrushes. Something else I haven't got. Aha! Ah! Archie, uh, uh, good day. Um, I didn't hear you come in. Yes, there's normally a tingle dingle to your door. Oh no, now my bell isn't working. Oh dear. Oh well, um, I wondered if you had any tennis balls. Tennis balls? Oh yes. Oh no! Oh dear! I say! Oh. Ah. I'm really sorry, Archie. This was the first time that Sammy had ever split a bag. <sighs> it was the worst day he'd ever had. Sammy! Are you in there? The next morning, it was the first time that anyone could remember Sammy's store not opening. I can't see him. Everyone was worried about him. Morning, Alice. You're up nice and early. Morning. Uh, Sammy hasn't opened his store. But his store's always open. Not today. And we can't find him anywhere. Come on, Buster. I think Sammy may need help. Get the gate, Ned. I'm getting the gate, Frank. Oh, thanks, Ned. Oh, and if you see Sammy, could you ask him about the yo-yos? Hi, Josie. Have you found him yet? Hi, Buster. No. It's like he's just disappeared. Hmm. Oh, Sammy! You're here. Ah, uh, good day. We were wondering why you haven't opened up your store. I can't do it anymore. Do what? Be a shopkeeper. I let Mitzi down with her yo-yo. I lost your groceries. I can't twirl a bag anymore. Uh, even the bell on the shop door doesn't work. You know, Sammy, perhaps you were just having a bad day. That's right. Everyone has them. They do? And just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean you're a bad shopkeeper. Uh, but what if I don't have something somebody wants again? I made this list of things I don't have. It's really long. Look. You can't keep everything in your store, Sammy. That would be impossible. And besides, everyone really misses you. Really? Maybe I was just having a bad day. Yeah. You're right, Buster. You're right, Frank. I'm going to open the store. Thanks. We are here to help. Everyone was excited when they heard Sammy was going to open his store again. Things just weren't the same without his friendly face at the counter. There. Good as new. Thanks. Ahem. <clears throat> Good day, all. I'd just like to say that from now on, Sammy's store will always be open. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Alice. Sammy looks like his old self again, Frank. Yeah, great, isn't it? So, it was yo-yos you wanted, wasn't it? Why, oh, yeah. Please, Sammy. Well, 
guess what I've got here. Whoa. I couldn't find any, so I decided to make you one each instead. <laughs> oh, great! Wow, and it's green. Thanks, Sammy. Three cheers for Sammy. Thanks hip, to hip. the Koala brothers, Sammy realised how much hip. his store meant to everyone in the outback. He also knew that if he had a bad day, everyone would understand. After all, no one's perfect, even the best shopkeeper in the outback. One beautiful starry outback night, Ned the Little Wombat was sitting up in bed with his teddy. Ned loved his teddy. Hey, Teddy, why don't we go rock collecting tomorrow? I reckon a nice blue glittery rock would look great in my collection. Yes, a nice blue rock would be just the thing. In no time at all, Ned and Ted were both fast asleep and dreaming of the big blue rock they would go searching for in the morning. A perfect rock finding day! Before they left, Ned needed just one thing. Do you mind if I borrow your binoculars? As long as you look after them. I will. They're over there. Ned and Teddy set off on their great rock-finding adventure. Hmm, where do we start looking for a nice big rock, Teddy? Um, I know. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Ned and Ted walked all morning trying to find a perfect blue rock. Looking for rocks in the outback. No, nothing there. Not a sign. Oh well, which way next, Ted? Any ideas? Mm, let's try this. Meanwhile, back at the homestead, Frank and Buster were busy cleaning the plane. Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. Oh, it's a scorcher. Mm. Hi, Mitzi. Hi there, Mitzi. Oh, it's a bit too warm, if you ask me. Yeah. Have you seen Ned? He went looking for some rocks. Rocks? Well, I hope he takes good care of my binoculars, then. There it is, Ted. I told you we'd find a blue rock. That one's just perfect. You borrow my hat and stay here in the shade while I dig it up. Out along the road, George was on his way home after a nice stroll. Hi, Ned. Oh, hello, George. What you doing? I'm trying to dig up this rock for my rock collection. Can I give you a hand or anything? Oh, I'll be fine, thanks. OK. Well, good luck, Ned. I'd have best be getting along then, eh? OK. Bye, George. Bye, Ned. As George walked on, he kept thinking about Ned and how he might be struggling with that big rock. Poor Ned. Oh, I think he might need a little help. Hey, Ned, do you need a hand carrying your rock? You could put it in my satchel if you'd like. Will it be safe? Very safe. Oh, that'd be a real help. Thanks. Ooh. Ned had a funny feeling that he'd forgotten something. Still, what really mattered was he'd found a perfect new rock for his collection. When they eventually got to the homestead, Ned and George were both ready for a cool glass of lemonade. And this is the rock I found today. It's a really nice one, Ned. Hmm, it's the bluiest blue rock I've ever seen. I think it's the best rock Teddy and I have ever found. By the way, where is Teddy? Teddy? Um, maybe he's in the trailer. Ned hurried to his caravan, but he had a bad feeling. He looked everywhere and found lots of things he'd mislaid before, but he couldn't see Teddy anywhere. 
Whoopsie. Uh, uh. He couldn't see him at Mitzi's either. It seemed like Teddy was lost. Ned decided to ask Frank and Buster for advice. Buster, Frank, I think I've left Teddy somewhere. Where exactly, Ned? I, I, I don't remember. I was so excited about finding my rock. I must have just forgotten about him. And now I can't remember where I left him. Oh, don't worry, Ned. I'm sure we can sort this out. After all, we are here to help. Why don't we take the plane up and see if we can spot Teddy from the air? Thanks, Frank. That would be great. We'll get going, and then you and Mitzi can search around here, just in case this is where you left him. Shocks away, Buster. Shocks away, Frank. Get the gate, Ned. I'm getting the gate, Frank. Buckle up, Buster. Buckled up. So while Frank and Buster searched the outback, Ned and Mitzi looked for Teddy around the homestead. But when Frank and Buster got back, they had some bad news for Ned. We searched, but we couldn't see Teddy anywhere. We're really sorry, Ned. Teddy's lost, and it's all my fault. Oh, poor Ned. Go after him, Buster. I'm going to call in more help for another search. <gasps> you know, Ned, everyone forgets things sometimes. Maybe you can try and remember where you left him. I've been trying, Buster. I just can't. He'll be all right, you'll see. You and Teddy have got lots of friends, and they're all going to help. Hi. We heard Ted was missing. Thought you might like some help looking. Thanks, Sammy. Thanks, Josie. I say, poor Master Ned. Is there anything I can do, Frank? I'm sure he's fine, but thanks, Archie. <sighs> I've just heard about Ted. I feel just terrible. Well, the important thing right now is to make sure Ted's safe. Now, everyone take a map and a water bottle and we'll start searching. Ned's friends really did care about him and they all wanted to help bring Ted safely home. Oh, Teddy, what if I've really lost you? What if I never get to carry you in my wagon again? Or tuck you into bed? Or tell you stories? Or put you in the shade out of the sunlight, like... Like I did today! And that's when Ned remembered exactly where Teddy was. Teddy! Ned couldn't wait to get back and tell everyone his good news. Hello! I'm back! Anybody home? Where do you suppose they are, Ted? They wouldn't just leave, would they? Not without telling me where they were going. Ned! Mitzi! Ned, where have you been? We've all been so worried. Ned, you found Teddy. Where was he? Under a tree in the outback. I must have put him there when I was digging up my rock. At least he's safe. That's the main thing. Yeah. Well said, Buster. I'll never leave you alone again, Teddy. Never, never... Everybody end. was pleased that Ned and Teddy were back together again. And Ned had learned that when you've got friends like the Koala Brothers, you'll never have to face a problem on your own. You know, there was nothing Ned the Little Wombat liked more on a hot outback day than one of Lolly's nice, cool ice creams. There you go. And this day was really, really hot. Well, Ned, that's your third ice cream in 20 minutes. Well, it is very hot. You can say that again. 
And according to the weather forecast, it's going to get even hotter. Well then, I hope you've got plenty of ice creams, cos I'll be back for more. See you later, Lolly. Bye, Ned. <sighs> Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. Oh, it's a scorcher. Mmm, you're right. It sure is. Oh, it's a bit too warm, if you ask me. Mm. The sun's getting high now. It'll soon be the hottest part of the day. Have you seen Ned? He went into town early. Town? Oh, I hope he doesn't stay out in this sun too long. <laughs> How are you getting along, Josie? There. That's the lot. Oh, well done, Josie. That should make them stop and look. Look at what, Sammy? What are you doing? Oh, morning, Ned. Oh, we are just putting up a display of all our sun protection supplies. Yes, we've got sun hats, bottle of water and sun cream. <laughs> We're going to need them too, I reckon. They say it's going to get even hotter. I'm not worried. Lolly's ice creams are the best thing for keeping cool. Keeping cool isn't the problem, Ned. The problem is the sun's harmful rays. Let me go and find you a hat. <laughs> harmful rays? They sound scary. Oh, they are, Ned, they are. You see, the sun is really hot. Sammy, could you give me a hand a second? Oh, excuse me a minute, Ned. Harmful rays, like from ray guns. That's definitely scary. There you are, Ned. This will help. Oh, no sign of harmful rays yet. Ned wasn't exactly sure what harmful rays were, but they sounded really dangerous. He didn't know what to do. What would Frank and Buster do? I know. They'd warn everybody to stay indoors. Hey, I could do that. Of course, I'll tell everybody to stay indoors, away from the harmful rays. Never fear, Ned is here, and I'm here to help. Buckle up, buckled up, chops away, chops away. <laughs> hey, Ned, back for another ice cream? No time, Lolly. I have to warn everyone about the harmful rays. Oh, OK. <gasps> what harmful rays, Ned? Good day, Ned. It's not good, George. It's not good at all. The harmful rays are coming. You have to get inside. No time to explain, George. But you have to go indoors and stay there till I tell you. But, but my deliveries are the, the, the mail. It'll have to wait, George. The harmful rays could be here any minute. Oh, I suppose, if you put it like that. I'll come back and tell you when it's safe. I, um, <laughs> thanks, Ned. Oh. Scooter, Alice. It's too dangerous. I don't understand. My scooter is dangerous? No, it's the harmful rays. They're on Ooh. their way. You must go inside until they've gone. Oh, but I have to deliver these sandwiches to... It doesn't matter. You have to stay indoors or the harmful rays might get you. I suppose a few minutes won't matter. Thanks, Ned, for telling me about these, um, things. Oh! Ha, ha, ha. Morning, Mr. Ned. What a glorious sunny day. Quick, Archie. Say. You have to hide in the cafe until the harmful rays have gone. Ah, uh, ah. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. It's very important that you stay inside. Alice will explain. And she's got some sandwiches. Oh, well, in that case... Phew. This saving people from harmful rays is hard work. I'm feeling really hot. Would you like another glass of water, Mitzi? I will in a minute, but these flowers need another drink first. What about some more sunblock, Mitzi? That sun's very strong. Maybe you're right, Buster. It's easy to forget when you're busy. Hey, do you think Ned's all right? I thought he'd be back by now. You know, I was just wondering the same thing. 
It's getting hotter all the time. Well, I just hope he's remembered to wear a sun hat and drink lots of water. Hmm. I think we'd better go and look for him, Buster. Good idea, Frank. Ned had been working really hard to make sure that everyone stayed indoors, away from the harmful rays. In fact, the only person now who wasn't indoors was Ned. There he is! And standing under that hot sun, he was starting to feel a bit woozy. <laughs> it's all right, Ned. We're here to help. Oh, hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. Are you OK, Ned? You're not wearing a sun hat. And you don't have any sunblock on. I was just keeping people indoors because the harmful rays are coming. You'd better get inside too. Ned, when was the last time you drank some water? No time for water. Too busy. But now I'm feeling just a little bit... Oh. I think we better get you home, Ned. Ned, wake up, Ned. He's got a funny colour. Oh, you had us a bit worried there, Ned. Yeah, you got a little bit of sunstroke. I was only trying to help, you know, like you do. I wanted people to hide until the harmful rays had gone. The harmful rays don't come and get people, Ned. They're just there. They're just part of the sunshine. They're what made you feel ill, Ned. So, can't I ever go out in the sun again? Of course you can, Ned. The sun's fine most of the time. There's just those few rays that can be harmful if you're not careful. The rules are really easy, Ned. When it's hot, all you have to do is stay in the shade or wear a hat to keep the sun off your head. Wear sunblock to protect your skin and face. And drink plenty of water. Here, I've drawn you a picture so you won't forget. Oh, thanks, Mitzi. But you haven't drawn any ice creams. Don't ice creams help at all? Oh, not really, Ned. Oh. But they can't do any harm. That's all right, then. I love Lolly's ice creams. Well, Ned, I think you can probably get up again now. But I'd stay in the shade for the rest of the day if I were you. Don't worry. I will. I'm feeling a lot better now. Thanks for looking after me, everybody. That's OK, Ned. We're just glad to have you back on your feet. Hello? Anybody home? It's George. George? Oh, no! George! I forgot all about him. Sorry, Ned. I waited as long as I could, but I had to come out or no one would have got their mail. Oh, and I told Alice and Archie they could probably come out too. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Thanks, George. <laughs> oh, look. Ned's going red again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, George. I guess I really messed things up, didn't I? You were trying to do the right thing, Ned, and there's no harm done. This is a nice cool drink here, George, if you'd like it. Oh, don't mind if I do. Everyone felt proud of Ned for trying so hard to help. And Ned knew that as long as he had his friends around him, he'd remember how to protect himself from those harmful rays in the future. If you're in trouble and you need someone to help you out, there's no need to whistle and there's no need to shout. Hey, hey! 